What's good? Welcome in. This is Eagles Now by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. Appreciate all of you for making the show a part of your day. There are so many content options out there, so anytime you come here, we appreciate that. As for what we're doing, we're taking questions and comments from the best viewers and best Eagles fans on YouTube, and that's why you subscribe, because you can be a part of the show just like I am as the host. We'll get you featured. Also, subscribe for events like our Sunday watch party. Eagles Rams. Our coverage begins with an hour pregame show, 3 o'clock Eastern, 12 o'clock Pacific. Live play-by-play, -play, audience interaction, instant reactions, super chat giveaways, 50-50 raffles. It's going to be a blast as it always is because it's the best place to experience the game outside of being at the game on game day. Really, the motto all week for Philadelphia is beat LA, beat LA. And before we start to take your questions, I think it's really important for the Eagles to take this game seriously. And you can't take the Los Angeles Rams lightly. You're about to embark on a very difficult stretch on the Eagles 2023 schedule. And by stacking wins and avoiding that Super Bowl hangover, the Eagles have a golden opportunity at hand here to go 5-0 and against the team that they should beat despite the cross-country trip. Game is set to take place 4.05 p.m. Eastern, 1.05 out on the West Coast, the Eagles 4-0, the Rams 2-2. A sneaky competitive game, especially when you factor in the Rams like to and want to air it out with a now healthy Matthew Stafford and the Eagles secondary is hurting a little bit. Don't let us down, birds. Get this dub and also take advantage of the opportunity because you already know there are going to be so many Eagles fans out there at SoFi Stadium making it loud just like it was against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers back a couple of weeks ago. Let's begin with this $20 donation from our guy, Dennis Designs. Hey, guys, want to see Devin Allen return a few kicks this week? He said he's the fastest player in the NFL. And is it me, or did we X the RPOs? I thought that really helped us last year bring the beer bat back for the Philadelphia Phillies. So let's tackle this question line by line here. I wouldn't mind seeing Devin Allen return some kicks. I thought it was pretty notable that he got activated for his first ever NFL game, like first official game, not talking about the preseason. That speed is dangerous. And if Bryn Covey cannot go Sunday's game because he's in concussion protocol, give Devin Allen a chance to return some kicks. And then a punt returner, why don't you go with Alameda Zacchaeus back there, who's certainly capable as well. As for the Eagles Xing some of the RPOs, they've done it a little bit, not necessarily with running the football to DeAndre Swift. That's the action that's helped him get going. With a lot of the RPO pass plays, though, Jalen Hurts has been one of the least efficient quarterbacks in making throws outside of the pocket this year. And I think that Philadelphia wants to turn him into more of a pocket passer to avoid some of those injuries, but Jalen Hurts is taking strides as a pocket passer. So that's good. And you already know, Dennis, I'm always down for a beer bat. Lion Fighter with the five. I used to think that Hurts didn't look in Dallas Goddard's direction, but now I think that Goddard is the issue. He had no hustle against the Washington Commanders. I understand why a lot of people are concerned about Goddard, and I want to see him be a part of this offense a little bit more. It just makes you much more dynamic, and through four games, he really hasn't done much. 13 catches, 88 yards, zero touchdowns. Nick Sirianni did say that he thinks that Goddard at some point is going to get moving. He's still going to be a part of the game plan. He also recognized and gave Goddard a shout out for getting it out of the mud. And that's him having to provide the Eagles with protection as a run blocker and a pass blocker. So they haven't been able to use him a lot in the past game. Why is that? Because he's been asked to block a lot, and he's done a good job at that. Nick Sirianni noted that this past week. Brad with the five. We still need a legit punter. Braden Man is not cutting it. Is YouTuber destroying still available? JK, but seriously, where do we go from here? I'm not going to lie. Like, you put me back at punter. Look at that flexibility that I have. If I didn't have the desk in front of me, I would have been able to get the, the foot all the way up. Let's try it again. Boom. I'd be able to punt that ball at least 40 yards. Braden man Aaron Sipas are struggling to punt the damn football for 40 yards. How can you not find a better punter out there than Sipas and Braden man? 
Like, Brain Man has had some opportunities here to prove himself. I thought he was bad against Washington. Is it really that hard to find a guy with a strong leg? Because it seems like Sip Boss and Man always struggled with that. So I'm with you. Matareza would be a weapon, a game changer, a player who I'd love to watch at that punter spot. The dude can boot it 60 plus yards easy and from his 20 get it to the other 20 and flip the field just like that. Now, obviously the legal situation is a big reason why he's not with the team, but can the Eagles bet that process? Can they try to figure it out and maybe think about bringing him in? What's the holdup? That's what I don't know. And as a guy who used to cover local news, something seems a little bit weird about it. Before we continue to take your questions, make sure you join the movement. Subscribe to us here on Eagles Now. We're on the road to 60,000 subscribers. We're going to get there before we know it. And if you're looking for informative, entertaining, insightful Eagles analysis and shows every day, this is your go-to spot. Peter Thurman, we traded for Albert Okwaebanam, so why haven't we played 12 personnel to get the ball to the tight ends? I think that the Albert O trade by Howie Roseman was one of those moves to bring in a young player who they think has potential, who they think they could groom into something, who's had flashes in the preseason as well as in moments in the regular season, and they want to see what he can do down the road. I just think that when you have Goddard and you have Jack Stoll and Grant Calcaterra, they've used all three of those players a lot. It's hard for Albert O to see the field, and he's been inactive for every single game. But I covered Albert O in high school. I watched him at Missouri. He is a freak, freak athlete. Like, we gushed over Tyree Jackson. Albert O is just as athletic as a guy like Tyree Jackson. He can play. I think they just want to see if he can master this offense before they put him on the field because he's not really a blocker. He's really only a pass catcher. That could be a little bit of a concern as well. But I love the 12 personnel. Shoot, if Dallas Goddard's doing a good job blocking, get another pass catcher out there and Albert O. Send him down to see him. See what he can do. Nay. Hey, nay, nay. Hey, nay, nay. Who would we trade for when it comes to defensive back? Is it safety or is it corner? So I talked about five players on the show that the Eagles could trade for at corner or safety. And within that list, there are some players who are hybrid options. For instance, Jeremy Chen. He can play safety. He can play corner. Buda Baker is a player who could play safety. He can play corner. I looked at a guy like Nate Hobbs, very good corner for the Las Vegas Raiders. You want to play him at safety. But look at how the Eagles used C.J. Gardner-Johnson last year. They used him all around the field, and he previously had a lot of reps at safety and at slot corner, more than 1,000 uh, uh, snaps at slot corner, only 80-plus going into 2022 at safety. But the Eagles used him out of the slot. They used him on the back end at that safety spot. So because your defensive line is really, really good, you can afford to take some chances, and you can afford to get a little bit creative on that second and third level. Hopefully, Sean Desai is watching the show because I want to see more of that. Lion Fighter, do you think DeAndre Swift can stay healthy because Kenny G is not a starter? Kenny G, great musician. Um, Swift, he stayed healthy so far. He's looked awesome. I think he's the most skilled, most talented back that the Eagles have had since LaShawn McCoy. That's not a knock on Miles Sanders. It's just the ability that he has. Ability has never been the issue. Missing games has never been the issue. He's always just been banged up. But look, when you're an injury-prone player, you're going to play if you're a little bit nicked up knowing that he's in the final year of his contract without that fifth-year option attached to it. He's trying to get paid. And he's doing a damn good job of impressing a lot of people. Hopefully he can stay healthy. I agree. Kenny Gainwell, the starter, never really made a lot of sense to me. Backup running back, he's really good. Catch the ball out of the backfield, line up a little bit out of the slot. He just doesn't have the physicality, the athleticism, the burst, the explosiveness, the home run ability that Swift has. And I think that Swift is one of the more unique running backs in the game right now. Scott, Eagles offense, have a better yards and points per game than last year. Why do people say they're struggling? Let's throw up that comparison. Scott, a lot of people think that they're struggling just because the games and the wins haven't been as dominant as they were the first four games of last year. But when you look at these numbers for the offense, they haven't put it all together to play their best ball 
yet they're still averaging the fifth mo most points in the NFL at 29 and a half, fifth most yards at 392. And you're right, better numbers than last year. Yards per play, number 10. Third down conversion rate, number nine, where they have to get better. And this is a big thing among Eagles fans right now that is very noticeable. Going back to that last question, the Eagles last year turned red zone trips into seven. This year, they're not passing the eye test because they're kicking a lot of field goals. They are only turning 46% of their trips to the red zone into seven points. That's 24th among 32 teams in the NFL. Chualore, how can the Eagles stop Aaron Donald? Well, luckily for Philadelphia, you have one of the best centers of all time who's going to be going up against Aaron Donald and Jason Kelsey. What a great matchup that's going to be. I imagine Donald is going to get lined up against Sua Opeta, who's going to step in for Cam Jurgens. So you might not be able to stop Aaron Donald, but hopefully some chip blocks in there. I think running back pass protection is going to be really important as well, and some of those double teams too. Nick Stone, how many yards do you think Swift will have against the Rams? So he goes off for back-to-back 100-yard -back games against Minnesota and Tampa Bay. And then he's under 100 because the Eagles aired it out a little bit more against the Commanders. Let's go. The Niners ran all over the Rams, and I covered that game. Let's go 95 for DeAndre Swift. Just throwing a wild number out there. Air record Jones, what up? Why is it so damn hard to find a good punter? It feels like we just switched one bad player for another. Are they looking at anyone right now that could reduce the stress and be actually good? Hopefully you saw my rant a little bit earlier. I don't understand. Like, I want to go out right now into the parking lot, and I just want to punt a football to see how far I could punt it because I think I might be able to do a better job than what Aaron Sipos did at moments. Like, it confuses me. You have all these Australians who are playing Aussie rules football, shout out Cool Reigns, Aussie, 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 oi, 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 who could punt the ball 60 yards, bring them to America, pay them more money than they're making from the AFL in Australia, and give them a job. Because this is crazy. And it could cost the Eagles once again in a big spot like it did in the Super Bowl. All right, thanks to all the questions that came in. If you want your questions to be a part of the show, that's another reason why you got to hit that subscribe button. This is Eagles Now by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Sr. Thank you so much for being here and watching. Always love chopping it up with the Bird Gang.